This next guest is director Jody Gomes. Good evening, Jody. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to have you here. Now, you directed um, One Child Left Behind, the untold story of the Atlanta teaching scandal. It's a documentary about the Atlanta test changing scandal. And before we get right into it, I think we have a clip of your trailer. Let's check it out. I had to make a decision to cheat or not to cheat. I made the wrong decision. Some people got the real problem. It was one of the biggest scandals ever to rock American schools. There is a held belief. Pedro Nogueira talks about it as the normalization of failure. That means you don't think black students could learn. This was never about children. This was about a power grab for educational funds in the state of Georgia. The Republican governor says, let me take over these failing school districts. Well, the districts are failing because you're underfunding these schools by a billion dollars a year. The cheating scandal was not about education at all. It was about changing public perception of public schools. You made them distrust educators. Then you have to have other people come in to save them from themselves. We wanted to get at the truth. Now, were we interested in putting some of the higher ups in jail? Yes, they needed to go to jail. There were 256,779 answers that were changed from the wrong answer to the right answer. The truth truly needs to be told. Don't put your blame on me. All right, Jody, so in case that people still need a little bit of a refresher, um, the scandal it started with an investigation into teachers and principals allegedly changing wrong answers on standardized tests in Atlanta. That investigation started in 2009 and it ended. It's still kind of going on because I think some people are still going through the appeals process, if I'm Correct, right? But uh, eventually, 11 Atlanta educators were found guilty of RICO charges. And um, I want to know why you even wanted to make this film. Well, you know, when I was working in Los Angeles, the headlines popped up that there were educators that were being criminalized mm -hmm. and convicted for 30 years. And that just didn't set right with me. I couldn't figure out had they not murdered somebody, had they not molested somebody. When I heard it was test cheating, it just didn't set right with me. So we wanted to do a deeper dive into the story. And what we found was many smoking guns. And the smoking guns that were huge to us was that there was some admitted cheating. Um, it wasn't system wide like Atlanta reported and like the headlines reported, but there was certainly a lot of cheating. But it was the why that really struck me and struck a chord with me. The why was a lot of people were cheating because of no child left behind, which is a legislation that says if you don't pass end of the year state test, your schools will close, teachers would be fired. And for a lot of these underserved communities, the schools were a sanctuary. And the threat of closing those schools over statewide tests that quite frankly, didn't take into socio socioeconomics into account for these kids was just unfair. I, I, I think like I just even got chills thinking about that and how often that happens. Um, schools like schools that are mean a lot to the community, a lot of times in black communities are often underserved. They deal with, they struggle getting the funding necessary to support the kids. And then it seems like every year, 10 of those schools around you are up for debate on should they close? Should these kids go somewhere else? Um, should the school not exist in that neighborhood? So I know exactly what you're talking about. I wanna ask you, why do you think this um, scandal kind of blew up like it did? Like as far as what you learned, why did it become such a national story? Because from my understanding, this is something that happens countrywide. And it ended with teachers being facing charges that usually we hear about when we're thinking about the mafia. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, I think if you like any justice case and any social justice case, if you follow the money, mm -hmm. you find a story. And we did. We found a story of a governor, a Republican governor who wanted to take control of these schools. And basically, he ran up against a superintendent who was very independent and she was a change agent and she pushed back. You know, granted, there was a cheating scandal, but he tried to use the cheating scandal as a window and window dressing to take over the school district. And that school district had a half a billion dollars a year coming into it. And so when you follow the money, a lot of people got swept up underneath what was basically a political problem. And yes, there was cheating. And I, I, I don't want that to go lightly said. Yeah. 
there was cheating and cheating is not condoned by us or the film or even anybody in the school district. But at the same time, we had to get into the why and understand what these people were doing. Was there a mafia ring? You know, Was this the equivalent of a sex trafficking ring? It wasn't, it was teachers pointing to the right answer or teachers unknowingly even going up to some of the students and giving them the right answer. But by and large, it was educators saying, I knew my kids in sixth, seventh and eighth grade with a second grade reading level were not gonna pass that test. And so yes, we cheated on that one day of the year, but for the rest of the 10 months of the school year, we taught those kids remedial and we caught them up and we educated them. And that was a big message that we found that was never reported in the headlines, that there was a lot of educating going on even though despite there was cheating going on. So talk more about those educators because were they reluctant or eager to tell their stories? Was it hard to get people to come out and be open about what happened? Absolutely not. You know, mm -hmm. at a certain point, we wanted to make sure that both the prosecution and the defense was equally represented in our film. But for the most part, by and large, like most cases, you only heard from the prosecution side throughout the entire case. We're sitting in the 10 year anniversary of when the case first broke off. And it was not hard to get people to tell their story on the defense side because they never testified at trial. They were never given a platform at any point in the last 10 years to actually tell their story. And where the film lives is there were certain people that cheated. But there were 12 individuals that went to trial. And those 12 individuals still to this day maintain their innocence. And a lot of them went to trial because they were uncomfortable taking a plea deal that was offered to them. And in that plea deal, not only did you have to admit to cheating yourself, which again, they maintain their innocence and say they did not cheat or instruct anybody to cheat, but you had to implicate somebody else in this plea deal. And so the person that they wanted implicated was the superintendent. And by and large, these 12 people, most of them had never even met this woman. They had only had maybe one or two phone calls with the superintendent and just felt thoroughly uncomfortable from a legal perspective taking a plea deal. So they rolled the dice, they went to trial, which they were fully entitled to do under the United States law. And unfortunately, with the machine that was behind the case, these 12 individuals, or I should say 11 individuals were found guilty. One was found not guilty. Were you surprised by anything that you learned while making this film? Absolutely, I was surprised at how much penalty was assessed to test cheating. I was surprised that the, the cheating itself rose to the level of criminality that there were RICO charges. Now RICO charges, as you said, are usually handled and used for the mafia or used for a widespread criminal organization. It was suggested that these teachers all knew each other and that they were cahooting together to cheat the system. Well, the 12 individuals that went to trial had never met each other until the night that they were arrested. So it wasn't possible for them to be a criminal organization. The other issue was I was knowingly surprised and admittedly surprised at those that did cheat and that did come on camera for the first time to admit their truth. You know, whether whether you like it or not, whether you not like their excuse for cheating, they did own their truth and you have to respect them for coming forward and telling you the why. You know, And that again is where the film lives. Wow, and there is another aspect of this, You know, the children, these students, where do they stand at the end of all of this? Because you, know, you could ask who cheated them, who failed them? And it seems right. like everybody, you could, it could be politics, the standardized testing system, the, yes. uh, the administrators, some could say the teachers, where do they stand now, you know? Well, you know, this was not a victimless crime. Uh -huh. and let's, let's not say that it was. Um, there were over 3,000 children that were caught up in the scandal and that had been cheated for the most part out of an education. But we opened the film on a 19 year old girl who at the time was still in the 10th grade trying to attempt to graduate. She was in the 10th grade at 19 years old. And still to this day, now she I think is 22 and still has not graduated. The standardized test didn't fail her, the educators didn't fail her. The entire US Department of Education failed this young lady because clearly before 2009, she was already left behind. And that's why the film is called One Child, no, one child Left Behind because one child left behind is too many based on a law that's called No Child Left Behind. You know, what happened in her case and what's happening with many kids around the country, rather than being kept back, they're being pushed forward. And what people didn't understand about this particular test that was cheated on, unlike the Hollywood scandal that's happening right now, the CRCT and the milestone test does not measure the child's aptitude to pass them on to the next grade. What it measures and what it is 
an accountability standard for is to see how the school is doing and how well the educators are doing. So whether that child passed that test or not, or whether somebody cheated on the test for them or not, that child was still advanced to the next grade, even if that child failed, even if that child could not read at their grade level. And to me, that is a huge injustice. And at some point you have to ask the US Department of Education, what part and what part of culpability do you have in this entire equation for United States education failure? And I want to talk about something you just brought up because I was dying to ask you about this, the Hollywood test taking scandal. And we call it the Hollywood, but it really happened across the entire United States, colleges yes. across the United States, but it's being called the Hollywood college scandal because a couple of famous, a few famous actors, actresses were caught up in this. And I'm curious your thoughts and if you've gotten thoughts from some of the people who were able to sit down and participate in your film of the differences of the possibility, we're talking about you know, 11, educators in Atlanta who are facing actual prison time, some who've already reported for their sentences. And um, at least Lori Loughlin and uh, Felicity Huffman, two famous actresses who quite possibly won't face any jail time. Well, uh, from what I understand, Felicity Huffman is either facing or got charged with 30 days. Now, let me just give you an example how these educators in Atlanta were charged with RICO you have to have a certain amount of money tied to the crime. Mm -hmm. for, for these 12 people, cumulative and collectively, there was $3,500 at stake that was transferred from federal funds over to their hands. $3,500. Okay. That's it. I'm sorry, but in the college scandal, somebody paid a half a million dollars for one child. To pass the SAT test. We're talking about millions of dollars. Yeah. Millions of dollars has changed hands. So the question becomes, will the punishment fit the crime in both cases? I don't think the punishment fit the crime in the Atlanta case. And I think the African American, by and large, all female educators in Atlanta were made an example of. And I would like to see the same kind of equal punishment or lesser punishment for Atlanta because they're still under appeal and they're filing motions for new trials. But I would like to see the same type of punishment happen in both cases. If the educators in Atlanta have to maintain their, their sentences, then there should be much stiffer penalties in the college scandal, shall we say. Well, Jody, when and where will we be able to watch One Child Left Behind? We're currently on the festival circuit and we're winning lots of awards for best documentary awesome. and lots of jury awards. You can see the trailer and you can see an extended preview on our website, which is onechildleftbehindmovie.com. But we're also encouraging educators and universities to actually host a screening in their local markets. And you can go on that same web website, onechildleftbehindmovie.com, click on host a screening and find out the details so that we can come to your market with the film, with the cast, with myself and do a QA and and have deeper conversations in every particular market as to how you can avoid this. Because this film is a cautionary tale about high stakes testing and the perils of disadvantaged schools. And everywhere that we screen, we were in Denver recently and several non-ethnic principals came up to me after watching the film and hearing the story of, one of how one of our principals was railroaded. He said, you know, I think I have a problem at my school. I don't know that we're deliberately cheating, but I don't know that we're not cheating. And will I be held accountable for that which I don't know? I don't know if my people are cheating or not. And he said, will I face criminal charges? The question and answer is very valid, but the answer is if it happened in Atlanta, it can happen in any city in the United States. Jody Gomes, director of One Child Left Behind and of so many other famous works. People should definitely look into you and everything that you've created. I'm happy to meet you. This was a great conversation, thank you. My pleasure, thank you so much.